up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car track suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2023 mitsubishi mirage courtesy of younger mitsubishi in hangerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this is the second least expensive vehicle available here at least in the u.s currently right now so that is pretty impressive but not only that you get america's best warranty as well with this one being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper ten years one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain and better yet if you actually were to get this one from younger mitsubishi here in hagerstown you get a double powertrain warranty being 20 years two hundred thousand miles on the powertrain so that's dang impressive as well so this is going to be part of the fifth generation mirage introduced back in 2014 and there is one major change for the 2023 model year so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be several different trim levels for the 2023 mirage first one being the escvt starting at sixteen thousand two hundred and forty five dollars which by the way is a sixteen hundred dollar price bump on the 2022 model year and by the way you probably noticed i emphasize cvt because that is the major change for 2023 there's no longer any manual transmission available for the mirage now so i do want to mention that le trim level which is the one we are in today starting at sixteen thousand eight hundred and forty five dollars be also known as block edition starting at 17,445 and the se for 18,145 dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the mirage is going to be the same powering the little beast is a 1.2 liter naturally aspirated inline three cylinder 76 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 74 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a cbt 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 12 seconds flat We'll do an acceleration test later in the video, so we'll see how bad that is. But MPG numbers coming in at 36 in the city, 43 on the highway. That's pretty darn impressive. And that actually beats the Chevy Spark and the Kia Rio as well, which are two of the competitors to the Mirage. So, of course, taking regular unleaded fuels. That's going to save you some money there. So, now that we got all that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the Mirage here to the test and... Let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Mitsubishi Mirage here up to speed. All right, let's just do it here. There's no one behind us in three, two, one, go baby. All right, let's do this. All right, we're at 40. Oh, we're at 50. We're at 55. At 60. All right, not the quickest thing in the world. I think we all knew that, but actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Zero to 60 in 12 seconds is absolutely a horrible number on paper, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'll just put it that way. It is definitely possibly the slowest vehicle I've ever driven. I'm pretty sure the slowest vehicle on the road right now, but if you time it out right and you know how to drive you'll be all right in this or if you're using it as a city car you should be perfectly fine as well but again we're talking about a three cylinder with 76 horsepower so again not the quickest thing in the world but you do get incredible miles per gallon i guess that's the trade-off but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you're going to find nine inch ventilated front disc in the back seven inch rear drum brakes as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it's going to come in at 127 feet which quite honestly it's a little bit on the higher side of things but it's kind of to be expected with rear drum brakes as far as braking feel goes since there's nobody behind us again actually not bad i kind of like the braking feel on this it feels good so it's it's kind of leaning on the firmer side of things it's not really that soft of a braking feel having said that again 60 to 0 and 127 feet again not the best number but it doesn't feel bad i think i just have kind of lowered expectations going into this but it feels pretty good i don't mind it anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle as far as ride quality goes you definitely tend to feel more of the road i will say that without a doubt this is a smaller vehicle and usually sub subcompact cars like the mirage you are going to feel a little bit more of the bumps and the stones and stuff like that in the road so that's to be expected as far as steering feel goes 
Hey, it's on the looser side of things, no doubt. So definitely feels like you're driving a three row SUV, I guess you could say something like that. It's definitely on the looser side. As far as cabin noise goes, again, it's one of those things you are gonna get a little bit more of. Definitely more of the road noise coming into the cabin. Wind noise isn't horrible. Then when you really get on the engine, then when you really get on the gas, I should say, the engine noise is definitely coming into the cabin as well. That part I don't mind. I like the sound of the engine, but the road noise is a bit pronounced. But again, that's to be expected in a car like this. The touching of visibility, that's great. I can see perfectly fine out the back. Matter of fact, I'm not sure you can get any better visibility than the Mirage because it is such a small vehicle and I could see just perfectly fine out the back. So no issues there. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mitsubishi Mirage. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2023 Mitsubishi Mirage finished in blue. Yes, that is the color name. Very creative. But as always, let's go ahead and start where this one is made because this is actually unique. So you would think with Mitsubishi being a Japanese brand, there was a good possibility that this was either built in Japan or a lot of times it'll be built in the U.S. as well. But... The VIN number on the Mirage is actually ML. And if you are familiar with that, which you might not be because I wasn't, ML signifies that the Mirage is built in Thailand. So yes, this is a Thailand built vehicle. It's almost all Thailand actually. So very interesting. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. Black edition trim level. I wanted to mention that one first. That's obviously going to add a bunch of black accents throughout the exterior and some red accents then on the front grille really differentiating itself. So did want to start by mentioning that. Halogen headlights are actually going to come standard on all trim levels, but the SE because that top trim level is actually going to give you full LED headlights. Yes, that means both low beam and high beam headlights are going to come on the SE trim level. So that is pretty cool. Automatic feature coming with the black edition and the SE trim level as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Fog lights are going to come on the SE trim. They are available on the LE that we have with us here today. And automatic high beams coming on the SE as well. So if you have your high beams on at night, the sense of the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when the vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams. So that is pretty darn cool as well. But overall, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Mirage. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, and so but now since we are around to the side of the Mirage here, black window surrounds will come standard, of course. Body color door handles, I wanted to mention that because you don't always get that at this price point, so that's nice. Body colored folding side mirrors will come standard. You will get integrated turn signals for the SE trim level. And of course, it will actually be finished in a gloss black if you were to go with the black edition. So they won't be body colored for that particular trim level, but perhaps one of my favorite parts about the exterior on the Mirage are these JDM style front fender turn signal indicators. So a lot of times you're not gonna get turn signal indicators at this price point or you're gonna get them on the side mirrors like I just mentioned, but for all other trims, you do get them on the front fender. And I personally love that look because back in the day, that was a big JDM thing. I know Mitsubishi and Honda a lot of times did that at least, and it looked dang good, like on the DC5 Integra, for example. So big fan of the turn signal indicators found on the front fender. But anyways, going off on a tangent here, let's go ahead and take a look at the wheels. 14 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the ES, 14 inch alloys for the LE. That is of course what you guys are looking at right now. Now, 15 inch black alloy wheels for the black edition. You're gonna get black lug nuts and black wheel locks actually for that black edition as well. It's pretty cool. Then 15 inch silver alloys for the SE trim level, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, of course you got that black antenna found all the way to the top, but I do like the hatch. I like the Mirage here because the rear spoiler with the integrated brake light, I think that really makes the back end. It looks so dang good back there, in my personal opinion, at least. And since I mentioned it, the Mitsubishi Mirage is a hatchback. However, there is a Mirage G4, which is a sedan form. So G4 meaning like four door sedan kind of thing. So think of it that way, but don't want to mention that. Maybe I'll get to reviewing that one eventually, but I like the hatchback look here. Rear window wiper, of course, does come standard. LED taillights actually come standard on every single trim level across the board that isn't even the case on a lot of other manufacturers out there a lot of them still do use halogen bulbs so the fact that leds come standard for all trims that's pretty darn impressive at this price point body color rear diffuser you guys can see that down below as well that looks dang good and there is a single exhaust out that you guys can see it kind of bouncing around on the bottom bottom corner there on the rear passenger side so i do like the chrome exhaust tip as well i think that looks dang good but i will say when i was driving 
this thing actually sounded pretty darn good so I'm kind of excited to see what it actually sounds like when I play the video back here so I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around to the back of the Mirage, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate, of course. So you just lift up on the handle on the actual lift gate itself, and it's gonna open up for you. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 17.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down for a little bit of extra cargo space then if you needed it. There is a cargo light back there. If you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, there will actually be a spare tire you're gonna find underneath of that. There is a cargo cover back there, and there's available cargo net as well if you wanted to go that route but so then make your way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 34.2 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall so how much space i had in those rear seats there is no rear center armrest no charging ports no rear ventilation honestly with the rear ventilation you certainly don't need it in a vehicle of this size then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating is going to come with all trim levels but the se the se is going to kind of give you a cloth leather at finish and also actually heated seats are going to come on the SE trim level as well. So overall, when it comes to seat comfort, definitely not the most comfortable seats in existence, if I'm being honest. The adjustability of these seats are really not all that great, and that's kind of made a little bit worse by the steering wheel, again, if I'm being honest. And so let's go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel here, and I'll explain. And so typically at this point, I say tilt and telescoping steering wheel, but it's not. It's not telescoping, it is tilt. So it goes up and down, but it doesn't actually come out. And so if you're a shorter individual, this might not be that big of a deal, but if you're a six foot adult, and maybe you got longer legs, you gotta put your seat back further, you typically have to pull out your steering wheel a little bit further, and I wasn't able to do that, so it really didn't create that perfect driving position, I'm just saying, but anyways, leather wrap steering wheel is gonna come on the SE, otherwise it is gonna be wrapped in urethane. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the start, and let me start by showing you guys the key here. Got your Mitsubishi logo on the one side, then when you flip it over, lock and unlock. Pretty basic key, which means when you lose it in Ocean City, Maryland, shouldn't cost a whole lot to replace, I would imagine, but it is a turnkey start for all trim levels but the SE. The SE is gonna give you a push button start. So all I'm going to do here, since we have the LE, simply put my foot on the brake and turn the key. And so, once started up, gauges look like they're from the 90s. So if you like the 90s style gauges look, this might be right up your alley. And so tachometer, all the way on your left speedometer is front and center. There is a very small digital portion of the gauges found in the bottom there, and that's gonna give you your basics like trip A, trip B, things like that. So again, a very old school looking gauge cluster, but for a lot of people, they like that. I'm just saying, but then touching on overall interior quality, front passenger vanity mirror, which was a new feature for 2022, of course, is carried on to 2023. SE trim level, I wanted to touch on this, is going to add a leather wrap shift knob, carbon pattern, window switch panels a gloss black shift panel as well but actually to my surprise automatic climate control comes standard on every single trim level across the board so essentially you just set a temperature and it's going to then automatically hit that for you and the fact that that comes standard on this price point is pretty darn impressive if i'm being honest but just in front of the shifter you're going to have a little bit of storage to probably put your cell phone i would imagine there is a usb charging port right next to that you got your dual cup holders just in front of the shifter as well you got your manual e-brake and then there's there is one more cup holder in between the driver and passenger seat as well. Uh, overall, everything is finished pretty much on the basic side. You got your black handles for the interior door handles there. One thing I think they are probably missing is I wouldn't have minded some armrest for the uh, the middle here between the driver and the passenger because I kept trying to find a place to rest my elbow while I was driving and I didn't have that. So even if they put just tiny armrests that were connected to the seats, I think that would be a big improvement as well. And there is a 12 volt power outlet found kind of just above the USB charging port as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Seven inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard. That comes with Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay also coming standard. So you got free navigation as long as you got a cell phone with data, that's pretty cool. And of course you can check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound system, there is one of them. It is four speakers that come standard on every single trim level. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Oh, 
it sounds like a four speaker sound system if I'm being honest. But anyways, I mean, if you're not that into music, what's the big deal? And I'm sure there's aftermarket sound systems if you are, if you wanted to go that route. But if you're just listening to like crypto podcasts or something like that, like I do in the background, then honestly, that's not even a huge deal. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Mirage in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the entire screen, letting you know what is behind you so you don't go running anything or anyone over, which is always is going to lead us into safety. So front side side curtain airbags do come standard. There is a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, forward collision mitigation system with pedestrian detection and hill start assist as well. And then the SC trim level is going to add to that lane departure warning as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Mirage, this is the second most affordable new car in the US today. So that's really one of the main selling points. If you're looking for kind of a, a car to weather the recession, maybe a car that's just flat out going to save you a bunch of money so you could put into other things like going on vacations, perhaps, or something like that. This is definitely a solid pick for that. And by the way, I said second most affordable, the most affordable, at least at this time, is the 2022 Chevy Spark. America's best warranty as well being five or 60,000 mile bumper, bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain, but you get that double powertrain warranty if you go to Younger Mitsubishi here in Hagerstown. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay coming standard. I think that's pretty cool. I love the JDM turn signal indicators on the front fenders then as well. As far as room for improvement goes, it's definitely slow, without a doubt. Uh, probably the slowest car I've ever driven. The sound system certainly wasn't the best, and the interior quality, of course, is not going to be the very best either. Everything's pretty much on the basic side. But having said that, again, it's very affordable. Let me know what you guys think of the Mirage in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.